Hi everyone, this is Dr. Murtaza. Most of you know me as Dr. Mac. Welcome to you, the new video. And today we're talking about how to become a registered dentist in Australia if you're from overseas. Like a lot of people ask me this question. I've made previous videos. If you haven't watched it, go watch it first regarding the most frequently asked questions about the ADC exams that are coming to Australia. I feel like some of your questions might be already answered there if you haven't got well, like seen that video. So do see those videos again. But today I thought, let's just talk about, keep it simple and talk about the most common question is how to become a dentist in Australia, what you need to do. So let's talk about this today. <music> to become a dentist in Australia. Now, this is one of the first things can, that comes to our mind, come to our mind, like if, if you're from overseas and, and maybe one of the countries and we're thinking that, should I pursue my journey being a dentist in Australia? And when you say, yes, I want to, or should I, or, you know, that questions come to your mind, the first thing is, what do I need to do? What is the procedure? How can I become a dentist in Australia? Is there a way? Is there not a way? Or what are the things? So there's a very simple answer to this. And I would say it literally like three letters. A-D-C. Australian Dental Council exams. A-D-C exams. This is your typical answer. Like if someone says, I'm from overseas, and I wanna become a dentist in Australia, what should I do or what can I do to become one? You have to go through the ADC exams. Now, procedure-wise, you have to do the initial assessment first, then you need to apply for the written exam and then you need to sit the practical exam. So there are three parts. Once you have done all that, then what you do is you apply for the registration, which is the APRA, Australian Health Practitioners Regulation Agency, APRA. You get your license, practice in Australia. At that point, if you already have a permanent residency or citizenship in Australia, that's great. If not, you start searching for those options. And you search for those options, look for an employee that can either sponsor you or you can go to a state or a city in Australia that gives you that chance to work there and get your permanent residency. Simple as that. So how to become a dentist in Australia? A, D, C, simple as that. There's no other way around. Now, some say that I am 10 years experience in my country and I'm a specialist. I'm an oral and maxillofacial surgeon. I'm an orthodontist. I'm an operative restorative dentist. I'm a big cosmetic dentist. Uh, sad news for you or good news for you, I'm not sure how you're gonna take it, but you have to go through the same process. Previously, Australia had a specialist exam as well. You can come and do the specialist exam rather than an ADC general dentist exam, and you can work as a specialist, but now they have reduced it or cut it short, and then they, they've said there's only one exam, the ADC general dentist exam, even if you're a specialist or you have 200 years of experience, I'm not sure if it's actually possible, but just saying, you have to go through the same exam again. And from there, you can do the specialization exams or other things, but you have to go through the same exam again. Now, there might be some people who, who will say, that, you know, I have no experience. Can I still do the exam? You can still do the exam. You can still pass. You can still work as well. But I think I mentioned one of the things previously as well, that it doesn't matter how much experience you have or you have no experience, you are eligible to sit in the exam. If you have a BDS, which is a four to five years equivalent from your country, that's good enough for you to sit and pass. You don't need any essential experience to sit in the exam. Even if they ask in their, um, when you're doing the initial assessment about the experience, you can always say that, you know, I'm a, I'm a fresh graduate, I have no experience. Like Australian graduates, because that's how they're judging you on the basis 
of how the fresh graduate comes out from their dental school. So if you're more experienced, great, but if you're less experienced, doesn't matter. But the problem here is doing the ADC exam and passing it is no problem. But later on, when you apply for your visas, and if you don't have permanent residency, especially for those, if you don't apply for your visas and stuff, they ask for some experience to be able to apply for that visa. Two years, even three years, certain visa requirements are. That's the time when you lack and you say that, oh, I'm a dentist now, I'm a qualified practitioner in Australia, but now for the visa requirements, I don't sit in. That's why I suggest people to at least have two to three years of experience, then they pursue the exams. It's beneficial for you. There might be a visa that you might get without that, but it's a lot easier for you to go through that process, especially when things are getting difficult day by day. So if you're a specialist or a general dentist, doesn't matter, but visa requirements are important and that's how your experience will actually benefit you there. Now, some say that I don't wanna do the ADC exam. Tell me another way. Other way is that you do the dentistry all over again in Australia. Just do the whole BDS again, if you can afford it. Price-wise, it's around $80,000 for one year, depends on uni, it can go lower or higher. And then you can just do the BDS again, if you can afford it. And that's just a tuition fees, right? Other costs involve living costs, eating and food and facilities and everything else on top. So it becomes really costly. If you can afford it, there's a way, you can do BDS here again. Third way is that there's a declendent program, which is a specialist program. But the downside of that is, it's great you become a specialist, it's a three years clinical degree. You get a limited license that you can work in their university setup, do patients and stuff, but then outside you can't work. And once you finish, then you're a specialist, but then before you can work in your private practice, you still have to pass the practical exam. So if someone says, I wanna do the D. Clinton program, I tell them, First search online, all the details are already available online. But the thing is, to end the program as, as, as far as I'm aware, and again, this is about what I know and based on my experience. I'm not saying I'm, what I'm saying is correct. You have to do your own homework as well, but that's what I know and what I've learned in the past years living here in Australia and doing my research as well. So do your research first and find out, talk to the university, send them emails, and they will help you out. Now, to enter the program, you need the theory, ADC theory exam to enter those declinton programs. That means you have to do the initial assessment and do the theory, which is half of the ADC system. You have to do it to enter the program. And before you start working outside as a specialist, you need to pass the part two. That means the ADC doesn't leave you away. So the third way, which is, doing a specialist program still requires your ADC. The first method was, or the first way was to do the ADC exams. The second way was to do the BDS again. Now, these are the three ways, as far as I'm aware, that you can become a dentist in Australia. I don't know any other way. You might find someone who can tell you another way, that is great, but that's how I know and how much I know. And that's what I'm sharing with you. First thing, if you want to pursue pursue your ADC journey is stop asking questions to people. Go and open the ADC website, Australian Dental Council website. Open the website, look at the entire format of the exam, look at the how much parts, look at the information about it. The clinical handbook is there, the cost is there, everything is already there. So do your research first, read everything, and next you can Watch a YouTube video or ask some of your friends at what you need to do, but do your homework first. And next person you go and sit, ask suggestion from or advice from, they would actually appreciate a lot more. Rather than when people message me, I wanna do the ADC exam. Okay, uh, so what's the plan? I don't know. I just wanna do the ADC exam. Have you done any research about it? No, I haven't. Have you actually seen the website? No, I haven't. 
So I'm not your personal dictionary, right? Or someone else who's actually trying to help you. It's not your personal dictionary. They're going to Google it and then say, tell me everything. It's not, it's, it doesn't work that way. And it's not nice enough as well. Because the next person who's helping you is trying to take his precious time out to help you out. He actually thinks that this guy doesn't want to do any homework. He just comes and asks me questions. And it's, it's not being rude when you say no, but it's at the end of the day, you want to think about two people asking you advice or help from. One is who already done the homework. He's saying, I've done this, 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 this homework. I've done research. I've talked to these two universities. I've sorted my initial assessment already. Can you help me a bit with the part one? I would love to help them. And some of my fellow colleagues, they would love to help them. Rather than one person who messaged them, I'm going to do the ADC exam. Okay, what help do you want? No, I, I want to do the ADC exam. No, but what do you want me to help you? No, I just want to do the ADC exam. Like, do you want me to start and spoon feed you everything from A to Z about ADC? That's not my job, right? That's your job. So you do the homework first and then you follow the steps. And then one of the steps that you don't understand, yes, we are here or someone else is there to help you and they'd be more than happy to help you. So how to become a dentist in Australia? ADC exams, go through the process. Not easy, not difficult. I would say not easy, it's difficult, yes, but it's not impossible. If I can do it, and that's how I tell everybody, if I can do it or the other person can do it, you can do it as well. I'm not like superhuman that I've done it. I'm just like you. I'm an average dentist, an average human being. If I can do it, you can do it as well. So this is not an impossible exam. Yes, it's a difficult exam. They've made it tough. And it's not that easy to do it, but it's not impossible to do it. You can do it. Second is that how much cost and stuff is required to do the ADC exam? We can discuss that maybe in another video. You can comment below if you really want to know the cost. It's already on the website, but if you really want to know about the living cost, doing the part one, part two, I can make a separate video about it. I'm happy to do that. Um, also, is it important to do the exam while you're living in Australia or while you're living overseas? See, it varies from person to person situation. So it's hard for me to say that you have to be here or you have to be overseas. It varies. You can do it either way around. However, if someone asks me, what do you recommend? I can again discuss that in another video. So today's video was clean about how to become a dentist in Australia. You have three methods. We've already discussed that ADC. I will do the BDS again or do the declendent program. But again, you have to do the ADC one way or the other way around. Now, some people ask me that, all right, if I don't want to be a dentist, but still want to stay in the dental field or dental industry, but not as a dentist, are there ways? I was like, yes, there are a lot of ways. And some ways are really good. Some people, it's okay if you can't be a dentist, but you can still stay in the dental field, becoming a dental hygienist or a dental assistant or a practice manager or a clinical coordinator or a business manager, financial development manager, research planner or like research advisor. There's so many areas you can work in being the dent in the dental field in the industry. And some of them actually pays you really good. Some of the clinical uh, practice managers and those regional certified managers or those uh, people who work in implant companies and stuff, they're getting really close pay as a dentist. So it's not like your pay is really less. You stay in the dental industry, you still get your, you know, like, we are dentists, right? So we want to stay close to that field. We love it so much. So you still stay close to the field, but not as a dentist, as the other staff or the other help support, or maybe buying your own clinic, but you're just not working as a dentist. You're just managing it like a manager. So there are other ways you can do. If you really want to know about these things as well, you can comment below or DM me. I am happy to make a detailed video about this as well. Like what are the other ways 
of staying in the dental industry without being a dentist? And how are the ways to do it? I'm happy to do that. So hope this video is helpful. If you like the video, comment uh, and let me know if that you find helpful. Also, I'm starting a new series, which is Ask Dr. Mac. So you can comment or DM me on Instagram or on Facebook about any of the questions you have regarding the ADC exams or coming to Australia. And then I'll make a new YouTube video and answer that question for you. Hope that's helpful. God bless you and see you next time. Take care.